guys welcome back to another exciting episode you guys i love sage still like i actually love that woman she's actually one intelligent person that i love to listen to just like candice anyway anyway today's video is from sage still podcast it's titled rayleigh Gaines shares Lyle thomas locker room experience we got you know that um we did a video where Lyle thomas is a transgender woman who is involved in female sports and you know we know we had a conversation about that we talked about you know how it's not a fair game anymore because you know she was feeling left out when she was a male and then she had a trash because she wasn't winning she wasn't um she wasn't um having success in her sports i mean probably she wasn't doing well the men were stronger than her or she wasn't properly trained i don't know so she had in her trans she had to transition right into a female gender and then now she's a woman she's a transgender woman and you know she's not excelling in her in the female sports and you know we talked about how it's not a fair game how obviously she's stronger than the women because i mean she's still a man even though she's transgender but she's still a man and we talked about how it's not a fair game and how we, men transgender women should not be included in female sports Anyway, today, um, really Gaines will be talk to, talking about her, about Lyle Thomas' locker room experience. Of course, she's going to have an experience as a transgender woman. So, we're going to be watching that together. Before we get into it, my name is Ogechi. This is your first time here. Hello, this is Ogechi Reaction. Thank you for stopping by. Before we go any further, do well to click on the red subscribe button, like this video, drop a comment on what you think about this amazing video because, I mean, you're going to enjoy it, okay? So please drop a comment on what you think about it. I'm dropping my thoughts during the course of this video and after this video. So it's important that we watch through to the end, okay? So let's get straight into it first found out about who this man was in November. He's leading the nation, like dominating, actually not just leading the nation, dominating the entire country of women. I didn't know who it was at first. I see this name, Leah Thomas, and I'm like, hold on. Uh, I'm vying for a spot to be, you know, a national champion. I was ranked third in the country at this point in time. And this, this person, in, this was in November of 2021. But which race? The 200 free. Yep. Um, so I was ranked third in the nation, trailing a girl who uh, swam at University of California. She was ranked second. She's now transferred to Florida. That tells you anything. Um, <laughs> from Berkeley to Gainesville. Yeah, from Berkeley to Gainesville. Yeah. Um, but I, she was in second. I knew her very well because, you know, like most sports, your top tier athletes know of each other regardless of where you compete. It didn't matter that, that she was in California. We'd grown up competing against each other. So I knew her very well. But this swimmer who was leading the nation, of course, I'd never heard of. I'm looking up this person's name. There's no history of this person except for that season. I mean, none of it made sense. And so I'm scratching my head. I'm talking to my coaches and my teammates. Who is this? No idea. Uh, and we really continued to stay in the dark until an article came out that disclosed that Leah Thomas is actually Will Thomas and swam three years on the men's team at UPenn before deciding to switch to the women's team, where he was very mediocre and that's that's generous right like 400 oh, and some yeah, right yeah, yeah. um and the 100 freestyle which he, he ended up placing um top eight in uh, NCAAs top eight in the entire country he wasn't even ranked in the top three thousands <gasps> among the men okay so mediocre is he generous well um so I, I found out who this person was i found out it was actually a boy of course i knew that was wrong this whole time we all did my teammates we knew the unfair competition was wrong uh, we knew that having to change in a locker room with him was wrong. We knew that the silencing that we faced from our universities was wrong. Uh, we knew all of that. But I will tell you kind of this defining moment for me upon getting to that national championships. I only had to compete against him at one meet. It was like a week-long meet, but I didn't swim in the Ivy League, so I didn't have to, to go to Ivy Leagues with him. He wasn't on my team, nothing like that. I only competed against him this one meet. So upon getting to that meet... I'm kind of ashamed to admit it, but I was almost intrigued prior to arriving because we had so many questions. Like it felt like this circus. There was so this big buildup about it. We'd already gone to, to sensitivity training at my school before this to prepare ourselves to learn how to use she, her pronouns. We had already done all of the things to prepare. And so it was kind of like 
I had so many questions. Again, we all did. You know, what is the locker room going to look like? Is he as tall as what Instagram, um, his Instagram pictures look like? You guys look are looking like. him up. And oh, yeah, thinking, yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of like this sense of intrigue, like, haha, still at this point. And then all those questions were answered. And I felt ashamed for feeling intrigued. I felt heartbroken, really, upon seeing this. Um, what was your, when you first saw him up close and in person for the first time? Well, first I had to do this because he's so tall. He's huge. <laughs> he's huge. Uh, Wikipedia says he's six foot one. Oh. I don't understand Wikipedia is lying to you. He is six foot four. So, I mean, this Goliath of a man, his feet are huge. Of course, um, wearing a women's swimsuit with a bulge. Like, there was so much about this where I was just like, oh my gosh. So, what we was your reaction help? when you saw him in person for the first time? It was in a swimsuit. We were kind of like, me and my teammates, actually the first time I saw him was in the locker room. Oh. Um, and so, as I said, which let me just kind of set the scene, a swimming locker room is not a place of modesty. Uh, these suits that you put on, these your racing suits, it takes about 15, 20 minutes to really poke and pry yourself into these suits. They're paper thin, they're skin tight, your nail beds are bleeding by the end of it. Most of the time you bring gloves so your, your fingernails don't poke through your suit or so your fingers literally don't bleed because it's so intense. You have friends like helping you try and like tuck, tuck. skin rolls in your suit, all this stuff. So it's a very intimate, not modest environment. And there's also a lot of, of course, fully undressing. Of course. You get to the pool in your clothes, you change into your, your warm-up suit, just a normal practice suit then after warm-up you change into your racing suit which is where you know you're you're really fighting to put this thing on then after that after you race you come back and you change back into your practice suit to go warm down then after that you come and put your clothes back on so there's like i mean five times of fully undressing in one session and we had multiple sessions every day to set the scene so i'm in the locker room i have my back turned of course undressing i believe i was going from my practice suit back into my my street clothes and all of a sudden you hear a man's voice in that locker room. Of course, so it's, I mean, it's awkward. It's yeah. embarrassing. It's uncomfortable. It was an eight for every single girl in that locker room to like cover themselves, whether it was with their hands or their clothes or their towels and to, to leave as quickly as they could. Um, but I mean, it felt, I mean, of course it's an utter violation. It felt like betrayal. It was traumatizing. And, and maybe not even necessarily traumatizing because of what we were forced to see or how we were forcibly and non-consensually exploited. It was traumatic for me to know just how easy it was for those people who created these policies. To be honest, it is very traumatic. It is very disturbing. It is embarrassing. You feel betrayed, honestly, because how can... He doesn't even look like a woman, to be honest. He's transgender, but he doesn't even look like a woman. I personally think that there should be a separate toilet for these people because it is not comfortable. It is not comfortable. Imagine you being almost naked and then someone comes in as a man. He looks like a man, sounds like a man, large feet, very tall, muscular, comes into the bathroom and says he's transgender. And how do you think you will feel comfortable undressing in front of that person. Do you understand what I mean? I mean, it is very embarrassing, to be honest. I'm very uncomfortable because I don't know how I'm going to feel. I'm definitely not going to change in front of that person. I'm definitely going to not going to undress or change my clothes in front of that person. I would just rather go somewhere else or get some people to cover me up because he's not a woman. See, I feel like, why do people make these policies? Why do they make policies like that to make transgender women have to change the same locker room with normal, with women, the biological women. Why? I think they should have their separate bathrooms. There they will feel more comfortable with themselves. While, you know, it's bad enough that they are, that, I mean, she's involved or he's involved, Leah Thomas is involved. People like that are involved in female stuff. It's sports. It's bad enough. But you getting that close... You know, that intimate or that close with other women, with, with women. I mean, it is, it's, 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 it's heartbreaking to be honest. I'm very, I'm, I'm betraying. I mean, you feel a lot of betrayal in your mind. Like, how? Why? Anyway, let's continue. 
to totally dismiss our rights to privacy without even a second thought, without even bare minimum forewarning us that we would be sharing this changing How space. How was he handling the uh, tucking himself into a suit? Like, is that, it's all exposed? Like, are you right there witnessing yeah. this? Yeah, so again, Was he getting help from somebody? <laughs> you said, yeah. I, I got out of there before I even saw him putting on a women's swimsuit, but a swimming locker room, like, it's basically just a big square, like a big open square. There's no, like, aisles or halls or, or I mean, of course, there's bathroom stalls, maybe three, but this meet had hundreds of swimmers. So it's not an actual feasible option to get undressed in, inside of a stall. Like, and let's be honest, we've never, locker rooms in general aren't comfortable, mm -mm. but growing up a swimmer, you become comfortable being vulnerable in that environment. But that vulnerability was entirely stripped. And so he kind of just went off and, and I mean, he was, he was in the wide open and just takes his clothes off and lo and behold, Thomas and all of his glory, or lack thereof. <laughs> so that's what the experience was like, at least in terms of the locker room. Have there was even one girl who, um, she's a 31-time All-American. She's amazing. She's one of the most decorated swimmers in all of U.S., really, I mean, world history. She's amazing. Her name is Kylie Alons. She walked out of the locker room, so I'm at NC State, and I'll never forget. She said she, she found a janitor's closet to undress in, and she said, I have never been, or no, she said, I'm so grateful that I found this janitor's closet. And it hit me. Oh my gosh, we are calling this progress. Yet Kylie just said she's grateful to undress in a janitor's closet. She's grateful for that closet. This is not progress. Are you kidding me? Progress indicates we're moving in the positive mm. forward direction. Have you ever talked to him? Um, not outside of, no, no. At that meet, there was, of course, um, in the ready room and different things. Sure very brief small talk but no never if if he walked in here right now i'd love it today what would you say i would want him to know that his actions displayed an utter disregard for us as women which is of course what the women's sporting category was created to protect and uphold and celebrate um i would let him know that Look, I have no animosity towards him. I really don't. Like, I, I don't garner this hatred in my heart. I'll, ultimately, he was following the rules. It's the rules that are, are the problem. And I would be sure to tell him that. Um, I would be sure to tell him, look, live your life. Be who you want to be. Don't expect me to support it or affirm these delusions that you have because you very much are a man. Um, and that will never change. I, I would have no problem saying that to Thomas's face. You you are deliberate in saying Thomas. I am. Not Leah. I am. And not she, her pronouns, yeah. which he's... Thomas, he, I struggle, right? Right. Says she is. Wh what is behind that? I thought it was kind and respectful at first to kind of use and adhere to the whole preferred pronouns thing. I thought that's what kindness was. That's what we were told being respectful was. So I believed it. Um, as I said, we had to go to training. We had an outside professional, whatever that means, come in and teach us, sit us down, um, go through these mock interview questions. We had to answer these questions to her standard before we, we could pass. And if we didn't, we had to go through the training again. Um, I really believed, okay, no, I don't agree with this, but I can still be kind. Sure. That's not what kindness is. Um, I realized that's still pandering. That's still, it felt wrong still. It still went against my gut instinct. Um, and I realized, no, it's kind to say the truth. That's what love is. I'm not saying it to be offensive. I'm not saying it to, to deliberately hurt someone's feelings. I'm saying it to be authentic and to show that it's okay to, to use clear language. Our language has been, and this is one of the most eye-opening things I've learned these past two years, is how powerful the corruption of our language really mm. is. Um, I also think that saying, I also think that um, hate is a strong word. I don't think anybody should have so much hatred to these people. I mean, transgender people. I mean, that's a lot of hatred. That's a lot of, that's a strong word. So I don't think the word is hatred. It's just that, the fact that, I mean, and he was following the rules, just like Rayleigh said. He was following the rules and he came in there because it was authorized by the, you know, 
people that authorized him so he wouldn't have come into the locker room without you know getting formal you know authorization to use the bathroom the women's bathroom right yeah so um i don't think hate is the word i think these people need kindness they need to be you know you, i mean the fact that i do not agree with what you believe you are doesn't mean that i'm going to be unkind towards you no so i think that being kind also comes with saying the truth and standing by your truth and the fact that you're transgender you should not expect people everybody to support you or believe what you say and all of those things no but this is quite um disturbing anyway i don't think i would change in the bathroom where <laughs> there is a transgender woman especially when you are looking so much like a man i mean nah anyway please drop your thoughts and your comments on what you think about this particular video we'll be waiting in the comment section okay do not forget to like share subscribe and turn on your post notification bell i'll see you in my next episode Bye bye